Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Raba Karabrosa Tarabrata Shandaradaradabosate Shangarabrabrabosa Turamama Monday. Jesus, Spirit of the Living God, come upon us. Spirit of the Living God, come upon us, O God. My goodness. Well, friends, God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. I'm so happy to see you. I've missed you all. I hope you've missed me. Just to know that if I'm absent from Facebook or a lot of social media, it just means I'm very busy. And let me tell you, friends, I have been very, very extremely busy. And I've been in Hawaii almost two weeks straight. And I love Hawaii. Hawaii is like a second home to me. And of course, I come to Hawaii three to five times a year, ministering the gospel, strengthening the church, equipping the body. And also I love Hawaii because it is a place of refreshment personal refreshment where the Lord many times encounters me and I go deep with Jesus. But today I want to talk to you about some very important. I believe this is a day of strengthening. This is a day of beckoning. This is a day where the spirit of God is going to release a second wind over your life. Are you tired? Are you weary? Have you been so busy, extremely busy like I have, but have you been tired and weary? Let me tell you today, the Spirit of God is going to blow a strong second wind over your life. If you believe it, say amen. I want you to give us some hearts and likes and to share this on your wall. Amen. So I've literally ministered seven days. Seven days out of the last 13 days. And today, I'm also ministering. So this is my eighth day ministering here in the islands of Hawaii. My eighth day. So continue to pray for me. And in fact, today, tonight, I'm ministering on training in the prophetic. All right, today is a night of prophetic training. So if you want to watch the online broadcast, you have to register. But tonight, I'm going to do a special training of the prophetic tonight in Hawaii. You know, it's interesting because the last two days, I've had two different ministers in Hawaii. And these are new connections to me. But I've had two different ministers come up to me and say, Dr. Ben, who trained you in the prophetic? How did you learn about the prophetic? Who taught you about the prophetic? And I told these people, I said, listen, really it's the Holy Spirit who trained me. Because as I've pursued the Lord, as I've chased the glory cloud, I feel the Lord so strong. As I chased the glory cloud for my life, and as I pursued the Lord, the Lord taught me himself. And of course, I would listen to different prophets throughout the years and I would go to different conferences and of course I was hungry so I'd read books and watch videos and try to get as much impartation, revelation, teaching, foundation as I could. But I would say there was probably not one specific ministry or prophet, man of God, woman of God, that really mentored me in the prophetic. It was really the Lord and I was really walking in the Holy Spirit. Of course, people like Prophet Kim Clement, one of my favorite prophets. He mentored me from afar in the spirit. Bob Jones, Paul Kane, James Gall, Kat Kerr, you know, number of different prophetic voices from afar have impacted me and influenced me. And I believe I've received revelation from, amen. Because revelation and impartation is ongoing. It is an ongoing thing, especially as you are in relationship with the Holy Ghost. But the reason why I'm sharing this is because you have to activate, you have to obey, you have to step out. And when you are demonstrating and stepping out, then the power of God begins to show up, amen. So tonight, I'm gonna do some training on the prophetic. You can watch the online broadcast. You do have to register, however. So let us know where you're watching from. Continue to share this on your wall because now I'm gonna go into the meat of today's word, amen. I'm going to go into the meat of today's word because I believe there is a strong, second wind. There is a second wind that's blowing right now in Jesus' name. If you receive it, say amen. <clears throat> now, and we did pin 
on the chat group the link for you to register. If you want to be a part of the prophetic training tonight, wherever you're watching from, whether you are local here in the islands of Hawaii, or whether you're in Africa or South Africa or somewhere else in America, if you want to go deeper in the training of the prophetic, then join me and our Hawaiian congregation today, hallelujah, as we talk about training in the prophetic. Amen. But friends, help us to break the 200 number in Jesus' name. I feel the fire of God. I feel the power of God. So I pray that every single one of you that is logging on today, you will receive the fire and the power and the glory of God in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. So I just want to share real quick. Like I said, I've been ministering. I minister seven days here in Hawaii. Nonstop. I've been on calls, Zooms meetings. I've been very busy and extremely tired. And uh, finally today and tomorrow, I have a little bit of rest uh, before I return back home to the mainland. But who's ready to end this year with miracle signs and wonders? Who's ready to receive the long awaited recompense, the payment of the Lord from the hand of God? Are you ready? If you're ready, say amen and give us some hearts and likes. But I believe we're going to end this year. And thank you, Melissa Shu, for being a subscriber. God bless you. But I believe we're going to end this year with miracle signs and wonders. And many of us, I'm sure, are feeling tired and weary. Of course, it's been a big year. Praise God. Glory be to God. This has been an incredible year for me and our ministry this year. Truly, it's been the best year of our lives. But who's ready to go to the next level? 2023 is going to be the best year of your life. If you believe it, say amen. So I believe it's going to be the best year of our lives. But God is preparing us. He's purging us. He's getting us ready. And he's wanting to strengthen us before we shift and transition into the new. If you believe it, say amen. Now today, I want to talk to you about this word. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you about this word because this word kept coming up in my spirit the last few days. Probably the last week or so. This word kept coming up in my spirit the last few days to the last week. Now I want to share this word with you because I believe the Lord wants to strengthen what remains. I want you to comment, strengthen what remains. Amen. I feel the Lord right now. Here in the book of Revelation chapter three, and even last night I was at the YWAM Kona base and I was very encouraged being at the main base in Kona of Youth of the Mission where Lauren Cunningham, one of the greatest missions organizations is based out of. But last night I saw a, a friend, a brother in the Lord I haven't seen for quite some time. And as I saw this brother, I had this word of my spirit for him. <clears throat> and I shared this word to him. But today I want to share this word for you to you. And I believe it's for you. If you believe it, say amen. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 1. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write... The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. Now, this is Jesus speaking to the church of Sardis. This is Jesus speaking to his church in Sardis specifically. But I believe the Lord is speaking this word to you. Revelation chapter 3 verse 1. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Now, isn't that interesting? That's almost like a rebuke. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. You have a reputation. People love your ministry. People love Ben the ministry. People love this. People are receiving from the man, woman of God. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Verse two, wake up. I want you to say, wake up. Wake up and strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in my sight, Jesus. Verse three, remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief. And you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis. I love this. You have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. And they will walk with me in white. I want you to talk. I want you to hear this. They will walk with me in white. For they are worthy. Glory be to God. The one who conquers, say conquers, 
will be clothed in a white garment. And I will never blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess your name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. If you're with me today, say amen. And all of God's people say amen. Now this verse is really a correction or rebuke, but it's out of love. But I believe the key thing that God wants us to focus on and the Lord's been ministering to me is strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Strengthen the little that you have. The little, the mustard seed. Muster up the strength that you have. Some of you feel like, I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm weary. I've been going through battles, I've been going through warfare. It's Christmas season. And I don't have that much money in my bank account. I'm still waiting for the word of the Lord to come to pass in my life. Amen. But some of you might feel tired and weary. But the Lord is saying, strengthen what remains. Wake up and strengthen what remains. I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. For if you strengthen what remains, I want to say remains. If you strengthen what remains, then you will be clothed in a white garment. A new mantle. A new mantle, a new glory will come over you. Hear me now. If you strengthen what remains, then a new glory, a new mantle will come over your life. Hallelujah. And he will never blot out your name from the book of life. Roboto, I will confess your name, says Jesus, before my father and his angels. If you receive it today, say amen. Now that word strengthen in the Greek, strengthen. That word strengthen is sterizo. I want to say sterizo. And that word strengthen sterizo means to prop up or to support. It means to establish. It also means to fix firmly, to firmly fix. Okay, strengthen what remains. Make fast, establish, firmly fix, prop up and support what remains. Let me tell you, friends, what is remaining in your life right now? What is remaining in your bank account right now? What little strength do you have in your spirit, in your soul right now? Do you feel like you have a little? Do you feel like you have a little, not much? Strengthen what remains. And I want you to hear this because the spirit of God right now, what he's doing is he's purging the extra and the excess. He is removing things that are unnecessary. So it's a removal. And of course, last week I prophesied about the sudden removals that's taking place. There's going to be sudden removals in Jesus' name. Suddenly, things are going to be removed from your life. The burden, the heavy weights, the heaviness, certain people, antagonizing thorns, things of the flesh. It's going to be removed from your life. So I'm saying, man, God is removing the things of the past, the hindering things of the past. But I want you to hear this. As you are decluttering, as you are removing, as the old is being broken off of you, what remains? And some of you may look at the remaining factor and say, Lord, it's not that great. It's not that great. Remember the days of Nehemiah, when Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of the temple of Jerusalem. The Bible says that the elders who once saw the former glory, they began to weep and cry, Jesus. And what did Nehemiah say? This is a day to rejoice. Amen. This is a day to rejoice. It may seem little. It may seem small. But God wants to strengthen what remains. It may seem insignificant. Come on, don't compare the past to now. Don't compare then to today. Don't compare last year to this year. Come on, somebody. It may feel small and insignificant. But he wants to strengthen what remains. I feel the Lord right now. Father, I thank you. Right now on this broadcast, I release the power of God, the fire of Jesus. Any warfare and witchcraft that your people have experienced that is on this broadcast, I break it off now. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of God. The fire of God. Release in Jesus' name. 
So I'm saying, man, and let me tell you, friends, <laughs> even this week, I've experienced some unusual warfare. Got into a car accident, okay? And that's the first time I'm publicly sharing it. Got into a car accident. And some few things happen that's unfortunate. It doesn't happen to me. It doesn't happen to Dr. Ben Lim. But it comes with the territory of taking new grounds. It comes with the territory of expanding and moving forward. Amen. But I believe right now the Lord is saying, strengthen what remains. It feels small. It feels like you don't have much left. But there's going to be a strengthening and equipping, a supporting spirit, a second wind. That's going to blow over you. Someone say amen. Some of you want to give up. You're tired. My goodness. But the spirit of God is going to strengthen what remains. So let's go back to this. Nehemiah, Nehemiah built the walls. He rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. Shakarabata. And as he rebuilt the walls, the old guard, the old wineskin, began to complain and cry. Began to complain and cry. And Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I want to say joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I believe the Lord is releasing new joy. God is releasing new joy, new strength, Holy Ghost. New joy, new strength. God is releasing new joy and new strength over your life. And there's going to be a new support, a new wind, a new strength that's come up here. I see right now in the spirit that angels are being released to you right now. Hallelujah. I also see in the spirit that Aaron and her are going to lift up your arms like Moses. Amen. Strengthen what remains. Remember, Moses was getting tired. And whenever the arms of Moses was being brought low, they would begin to lose the battle. I need you to hear this. Whenever Moses' arms were being brought low, shakarabata, they would lose the battle. But whenever Moses' arms were lifted up, come on, I need you to lift up your hands right now. Whenever the arms, the hands of Moses were lifted up, they would win the battle. Some would say win. I declare wins and wins. There's going to be new wins that will cause you to win. Amen. There's going to be new wins that cause you to win. Some would say, I've won the battle. Jesus has won the battle. Jesus has won the victory. Whatever, there's victory, there's strength that's coming to you. And that is the story of Hanukkah. That is the story of the season that we're in right now. That is the spirit of the comeback, the spirit of recompense. There is a spirit of comeback anointing coming over you. And here we see Moses, his arms were brought low. Whenever the arms of Moses fell, because he was tired, amen. Thank you, Relino Rascon, for being a subscriber. Whenever the arms of Moses were brought low, he lost the battle. But whenever his arms were raised up, they would win. Are you ready to win? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, there's going to be great victory. I'm declaring over your life great supernatural victory in the 11th hour, in the last hour. Come on, somebody. God is not too slow and keeping his promise. His arm is not too short to save. And Jesus is about to cause you to win, even in the last hour. All the odds are stacked up against you. When everything seems like it's going wrong, <laughs> when it rains and pours, every single thing seems and feels like it could go wrong. But I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going to lift up your arms, support you, strengthen you, there's a lifting coming over you in Jesus' name. The Lord is lifting you. He's the glory and the lifter of our heads. He is lifting you right now. Come on, who feels a divine lifting right now? God is lifting you up. God is lifting the standard. God is lifting those things off of you in Jesus' name. So here, this passage. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, it's talking about strengthen what remains. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Hear me now. Hear me now. If you choose to strengthen what remains, if you choose, come on, 
Remember, sometimes less is more. Sometimes less is more. Jesus did more with 12. Gideon's 300. Come on, somebody. If you strengthen what remains instead of being distracted of what left. Instead of being discouraged. I need you to hear me. Instead of being discouraged about what did not happen. Being discouraged, disappointed at how it did not happen. Amen. Listen, even for me, I minister seven days. And tonight I'm going to minister again in Hawaii. That's eight days of ministry here in 14 days of Hawaii. Now, I definitely need rest. I need, I need rest in the Lord. And today and tomorrow is a little bit of rest before I come back. And I believe the Lord is going to give me more rest as I return back home on Saturday in Jesus' name. Amen. But I'm sharing this because I could be discouraged and say, God, I didn't enjoy Hawaii and my time of rest as much as I wanted to. But there's something that God is doing. And we need to be aware of what the Spirit of God is doing. Are you hearing me today? Because I believe God is saying, strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Whatever you have, whatever you do, whatever you're doing, whatever you're praying into, keep strengthening. There's going to be new oil, new gasoline. There's going to be new propane. There's going to be a strengthening and exponential grace. What about there's going to be a strengthening coming over your life? And many of you, you might feel tired. You might feel weary. You're saying, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, Things have left my life. Things are turning out in ways that I didn't want, I didn't expect. Things may seem to be different from what I expected, but God is in strengthen what remains. I feel the Lord right now. Lift up your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost. Shada ba ba ba. Because the Lord is going to take your little and turn it into much. The Lord is going to take your little and turn it into much. He's going to take your few and multiply it. The Bible says, I will turn the least of you into a great nation. Amen. He will turn the least of you into a great nation. So there's a new oil coming over you, friends. Remember the story of Hanukkah. <clears throat> they had one day's worth of oil and they were in a battle with the Ulysses Cilician army. One day's worth of oil. But that one day's worth multiplied to eight days. Someone say eight days of Hanukkah miracles. I want to prophesy this over you. Hallelujah. In fact, I believe Hanukkah begins what? This Sunday. Glory be to God. Hanukkah begins actually Monday. Amen. But I declare eight days of Hanukkah miracles in your life. Eight days. And remember, eight in Hebrew stands for new beginnings. So get ready for eight days of Hanukkah miracles. Someone say eight days. Come on. I declare eight days of Hanukkah miracles. Eight days of new beginnings. Eight days, a supernatural window is opening up over you. Strengthen what remains. Strengthen what remains. Because as you step into Hanukkah, there is going to be exponential grace. There's going to be multiplication. There's going to be a strengthening coming over your life in Jesus' name. Wow. And today is my eighth day ministering in Hawaii. Glory be to God. If you receive it, say amen. Give me some hearts and likes, my friends. Share this on your wall. Help us to break the 200 mark today. Amen. But there's going to be eight days of Hanukkah miracles opening up over your life starting Monday. If you receive it, say amen. Glory be to God. But you see, it's a war and it's a battle. And the Lord is saying, if you strengthen what remains, then I will clothe you in a white garment, a new mantle. Come on, somebody. Whew. A new glory, a new identity, a new destiny. If you strengthen what remains, he will clothe you in garments of white. A new mantle, a new grace. Ruskata. A new glory will come upon you. And I declare right now, a new garment is coming over your life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. A new glory is coming over your life. 
a new garment of glory is coming over you. If you receive it, say amen. Strengthen what remains. There's a strengthening coming. An encouragement coming. God's about to encourage you. The Bible says David strengthened or encouraged himself in the Lord. He had no one else to turn to. He had no one else to turn to. <clears throat> David was being discouraged. He was being surrounded. He was betrayed by his own sons. His whole kingdom was being torn away and ripped apart from his hands, from his very own life. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Get ready for God to strengthen you. Get ready for God to encourage you. Amen. To lift you up, to raise you up. Get ready for the Spirit of God to wake you up and to encourage you. It's called a new mantle. It's called a new glory. It's called a new robe of righteousness, a new identity. And that's what's going on, friends. Come on, if you're with me today, say amen. That's what's going on right now. Even before Hanukkah, the Lord is stripping things off of you. He's ripping off the old. He has slowed down and he has stopped certain things. Amen. I feel the Lord. Certain things that were going, he slowed down and he stopped to get your attention. To say, strengthen what is actually there. Focus on highlights strengthen what remains because if you do so instead of looking back instead of crying about what could have been should have been what you should have done instead of being discouraged at some of the things that are not but if you focus strengthen in the little with an attitude of gratitude, then the Lord will begin to release a new glory, a new garment, a new identity, a new name over your life. Somebody say, my name is changing. So that's what a lot of us are feeling right now. If this bears witness with you, I want you to say amen and give me some hearts and likes because that's what's happening right now. Before Hanukkah, He's pressing us like the oil. He is pressing us. We're being pressured. You're being pressured in your finances, in your energy, in your physical body. Do you know how many reports I'm getting daily? Pastor Ben, I'm feeling sick. I'm getting sick. Or do you know how many reports I'm getting daily of people saying, I got into a car accident as well, or, or this has happened, or I got this, shoo. But we break it off in Jesus' name and God is in strengthen what remains. My goodness. Remember the story of Apostle Peter. After Peter betrayed Jesus. Remember Jesus said, before the rooster crows three times, you will betray me. You'll betray me. You'll betray me three times before the rooster crows. And Peter said, no, my Lord, please don't say such a thing. <laughs> and Peter betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, so did all the other disciples, followers, friends of Jesus for three years. Three years, deep community, fellowship, oikos, koinonia, friends, disciples, spiritual sons of Jesus betrayed the Lord. Right at, hear me now, right at that hour. And as they betrayed the Lord, as they left them scattered, departed from him in a time where Jesus needed them the most, Jesus strengthened what remains. Jesus strengthened. He mustered up in himself and said, not my will, but your will, Father. I know you could take this cup away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. And of course, Jesus bore his cross. He walked down the straight and narrow himself. 
and he was crucified. Hear me now, he was crucified. And now we see John, uh, we see Peter, excuse me. Now we see Peter. Peter's discouraged. He's mourning. He's in shock, like some of you. You're probably in shock, you're mourning. You feel like something's dead, something's died. You're still dealing with the trauma. Even last week, after I crashed the car, I had to go through a little, I had to process or relieve some of the trauma or shock for about a day. How could this happen? How could this happen, Lord? How could I do this to you? How could I let you down? Why did you let this happen to me? And here's Peter. And he's back to fishing. And he's back to fishing. And as he's fishing, he catches nothing all night. John 21. He catches nothing all night. He's discouraged. Come on, friends. I'm talking to you. After Peter betrays Jesus, he goes back to doing what he loves, which is fishing. But he tries to fish all night and catches nothing. Not even a bite. No fish. And what happens? You know the story, John 21. Peter sees Jesus on the shore. <laughs> and Jesus says, what have you caught? Have you caught any fish? Have you caught any fish? And Peter says, no. And what does Jesus say? I want you to throw the net on the right side. Throw the net on the right side. Throw the net on the right side. Hear me now. Because I'm preaching. I'm about to preach to you right here. Throw the net on the right side. And as Peter did so, as he strengthened what remains, there was a great abundant harvest. Someone say glory. Somebody say glory. Are you ready for a glory harvest? As you strengthen what remains, the Lord's going to give you a great glory harvest. Peter was at his lowest. Peter was downtrodden. Peter was so discouraged, disappointed. Peter betrayed the Lord. He felt like he failed. Like some of you right now, you may, you may feel like you failed. You may feel like a spirit of failure. I break that spirit of failure off of you. And Peter felt like he failed. He was a failure. What am I going to do in my life now? He goes back to fishing and he strengthened what remains. Come on, somebody. And guess what? He caught a great harvest. I want to talk to you. You are about to receive a great harvest. A new garment, a new name. A new mantle of glory. Shatarabata. If you strengthen what remains, then the Lord is going to give you a great glory harvest. Come on, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There is a strengthening coming over you. A divine encouragement coming over you. The word of the Lord, even as Peter was so discouraged, even as Peter was at the lowest of the low, the word of Jesus, the instruction, the word of the Lord, throw the net on the other side, on the right side, someone say right side. I declare God is making things right in your life. I declare God is about to turn you to the other side. Jesus, Jesus, throw the net on the right side. There is a changing of the guards. There is a new positioning. There is a switch and a change coming to you. There's a switch and a change that's coming to you. Someone say amen. <clears throat> I pray right now that the Lord will strengthen you. Support you fix you firmly establish you prop you up in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord in this season as we're about to close this year and as 
Hallelujah. As we are about to step into eight days of Hanukkah miracles, the Lord is saying, strengthen what remains. Okay, I'm going to give you five points. Someone keeps asking, how do we strengthen what remains? Number one, you strengthen what remains by revelation. Number one, when you receive revelation, because the Bible says revelation chapter three, verse one, wake up. What does that mean? Spirit of awakening brings revelation. So number one, you need revelation. Revelation of what is of God and what is not. So revelation, number, number one. Number two, you need gratitude, okay? You need praise and gratitude in your heart. Are you grateful? Are you happy? Are you joyful? I declare the blinders are falling off. The deaf and dumb spirit is falling off of you. Shuka, God is about to expose and reveal in Jesus' name. So the blinders are coming off. Amen. So number one, revelation. Number two, gratitude. Hallelujah. Number three, focus. Now that's a big word for many of us. The Lord wants us to focus on him. Focus on that matter. Many things have tried to distract you and to delay you, discourage you. Gratitude brings focus and clarity. And that's really what revelation is. But God is refocusing your life. He is reshaping your life. He is shifting your life. And he is bringing focus into your spirit. If you receive it, say amen. Number four, strengthen what remains. The fourth way you strengthen what remains is you rest in the Lord. You rest. Let the Spirit of God come upon you. You see, <laughs> when Peter betrayed the Lord, what did he do? He went back to doing what he loved most. Like, here I am, I'm in Hawaii. I came back to a place that I love most. In order to strengthen what you have, you have to rest. And I declare the Lord is putting all of your enemies to rest. And as Peter felt so downtrodden and discouraged, he went back to fishing. And the Lord strengthened him, supported him. Thank you, Lord. Breathed fresh life upon him. Breathed fresh strength upon him. I declare right now, Witchcraft is falling off of you. Discouragement is falling off of you. I declare over you right now, any sickness and infirmity is breaking off of your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Shakarabata. As you rest in the Lord, the Lord will begin to recalibrate. Don't fight it, friends. Don't fight it. Let the Lord recalibrate. Let the Lord move. Let the Lord remove. Let the Lord do in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you want to receive a glory harvest? Do you want to win the battle? Do you want to receive new garments of glory? New garments of the presence of God. Amen. If that's you, say amen. And number five, the fifth way you strengthen what remains is love. Return to first love. The simplicity of things. Sometimes life is complicated. We make life so complicated. Christianity can be so complicated. It's not. Simplify in Jesus' name. Simplify in the Holy Ghost. Be childlike. And that's what love does. Love. Love the Lord and love yourself and love others. Love. So return to first love. There's a renewal of first love coming. A renewal. I feel the Lord right now. 
And these are the five ways you strengthen what remains. As is revelation and gratitude, as is focus, rest, and the love of God comes. Now you become encouraged. You receive a fresh wind. You feel strengthened. And you say, you know what? Let's go after this again. Let's do it again, but in the right way. Let's do it again with Jesus. I'm, shoo, I'm telling you right now, you're going back into the saddle. Get ready to ride the horse again. <sighs> Something felt like it punched you in the gut or it caught you off guard. A sudden attack, a financial attack came against you. A physical, spiritual attack came against you. But get ready for a second wind. Get ready for a new thrust. Come on, somebody. Get ready for the strength of God to come over you, to empower you, to lift you up, and to break you through, to see the greatest victory of your life. If you believe it, say amen. If you receive it, say hallelujah. Now give us some hearts and likes. And I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost because I sense the Spirit of God here. The Lord is breaking off the witchcraft and warfare. The Lord is breaking off the witchcraft and the warfare off of your life. Happy birthday, Heidi. God bless you. All the witchcraft and warfare is breaking off of your life. The warfare against your body, your health, your finances, your possessions, your mind, your relationships. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just worship Jesus right now in this place. The warfare against you and your name is being broken off. The warfare against you and your name is being broken off. Get ready for new garments of glory. Get ready for a new garment. If you're ready to receive a new mantle, a new garment, lift up your hands right now. Just pray in the Spirit of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a new garment of glory coming over you, friends. He will cover our nakedness. He will cover our shame. He will cover our humanity. His divinity covers our humanity. And there is a strengthening and a raising up. Hallelujah. If this word bore witness with your spirit today, I want you to say amen and give us some hearts and likes right now. Continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Jesus. Continue to pray in the Holy Spirit. Many of you, your bodies are feeling weak and tired. You've been getting sick. If that's you, I want you to say that to me. If you have been discouraged financially and even internally, you've been discouraged the spirit of slumber and sorrow has tried to overtake you. There's been unusual accidents, car accidents, unusual, unfortunate situations coming at you, coming after you. If that's you, I want you to say that to me. Lord, I ask you right now, touch your people. 
I declare recompense, healing, healing in Jesus' name. For there's a shifting and a purging, a cleansing and breaking off. The old is falling off. The old is breaking off. The confusion, the tiredness, the witchcraft is being broken off. Glory be to God. Lift up your hands, church. Right now, I release the power of Jesus. It's falling off of you. It's breaking off of you. Some of you are even doubting yourself. Some of you are even doubting yourself. You're doubting the word of the Lord. Did God say? Did God really say? Friends, if the Lord cannot kill you, then he will try to discourage you and to delay you. But right now, I break it. I break the power of witchcraft. I break the power of infirmity. I declare over your life, you are healed and whole. And right now, there is a new glory coming over you. A new glory is coming over your life. A new mantle is coming over you right now to cover you. Whew. Whew. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My goodness. If you receive it, say amen. Now, if you were sick, maybe flu symptoms or whatnot, feeling weak in your body, and if you feel a difference, I want you to comment right now. I want you to comment. Hallelujah. Because the Spirit of God is moving. I could feel it. I want you to testify and just comment below. Amen. Expect supernatural miracles. You're coming out of this. You're breaking through. And you're becoming a new creation with a new glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A new wind of grace to strengthen you. It's coming over you and upon you. Hallelujah. My goodness, I feel the Lord. If you receive it, say amen. Thank you, Lord. Rabba Tarabrata. We are about to step into eight days of Hanukkah miracles. Eight days of Hanukkah miracles. Get ready for comeback, recompense. <laughs> There's a joy coming over you. A new joy and a new glory is coming over you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, friends, thanks for jumping on today. I hope you received and you enjoyed this broadcast today. Remember, every broadcast I do is of the Spirit. Is prophetic rhema. <laughs> Glory to God. We want to be led by the Lord in every single thing that we do. Amen. Every single thing that we do. Thank you, Lord. Release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Every single thing we do must be led by Jesus. If you're blessed today, say, I'm blessed. Now, friends, remember, tonight, today, I am doing a prophetic training. We're going to go deep in the prophetic, talk to you about protocol, talk to you about the office of a prophet, how to move in realms of the prophetic. Amen. 
So if you want to join the prophetic training, which is online, you can register online. So we're going to post that link again, and Mr. Lawrence will post it. Let's give Mr. Lawrence some hearts and likes. Amen. So that's going to be tonight. And I ask you, consider being a subscriber to our page. If you love the content of this ministry, the prophetic grace, the flow of this ministry, then do give us a share, a like, a follow. Please continue to subscribe and follow us on all of our platforms, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Amen. The Lord is truly growing this ministry. And with your help, we can continue to expand and reach the nations. Amen. And also, uh, and also on Monday, I do have a free webinar. I'm going to talk about the mysteries of the menorah. As we start off Hanukkah next Monday, I'm going to talk about the mysteries of the menorah. It's going to be very rich, very good. That's going to be next Monday. Hallelujah. If you want to learn more about not just Hanukkah, but if you want to learn more about the menorah, the lampstands, the branches of God, the spirits of God, the seven spirits of God, according to Isaiah 11, verse 2, then I want you to join our free webinar called the Mysteries of the Menorah. Amen. The Mysteries of the Menorah. But tonight I do have a prophetic training. You can watch that online, so go ahead and join if you want to be part of the online registration. And also, Monday, I'm doing a free webinar on the mysteries of the menorah. Amen. And it will be pinned at the top in a few seconds. But I want to pray for you that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, He will strengthen you and what little you feel sense remains. That Jesus will strengthen you. So that you can receive a new glory. A new garment. You can receive a new covering. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to win the victory? Like the arms of Moses were lifted up. Are you ready to win the victory? Are you ready to get a great harvest like Peter did? If you enjoyed this broadcast today, I want to say amen. Please do consider sharing this on your wall. Amen. Thank you for joining me, friends. I hope to see you tonight on the prophetic training. Amen. You do have to register to be a part of that. Love you all. Bless you. Aloha. Happy Friday. Shabbat Shalom. And we'll see you soon. God bless.